We definitely see some, some fights. Big brawlers. Weird things happen. Guys put dimes in your hands and they go, come when you're 16. <laughs> but I was too young to, to become involved in it, and it really taught me to, to know exactly what I do and what I don't do, how to detect BS you know from club owners and that so at the time i was 16 and it was an issue you know right. sexuality was an issue i was very clear on a lot of issues i, I didn't have to go through a lot of confusion yeah yeah absolutely. invaluable experience invaluable yeah absolutely uh let's take a break we'll be right back with jewel singer and songwriter jewel his debut album is pieces of you you credit your mother with teaching you mm. about music yeah um and art and poetry mm -hmm. What was the most memorable thing that she taught you? Both parents were really, you know, I, I was with my father in his bar, so that was invaluable. The discipline, he taught me discipline in that sense, to practice hard, be professional. Even if it's a bad show, you smile because you're getting paid, and you do a good show, and you mean it. Uh, for my mother, she was refined. If I were to define the word grace, I would say it's the refinement of the soul through time. My mother is grace. She's very refined and has a lot of integrity and uh, a lot of focus, and, and was very unwavering in the commitment to her integrity. So to work with her in the business, she helps me as a co-manager, is a, is a stunning experience. She really helps me stay centered and has such a, a wonderful passion for art. She was a glass artist for many years, and a gifted singer, and uh, really understands creativity in a, in a different aspect. It helps you stay centered in a business and helps you keep creating. So it's been valuable. I mean, she turned me on to poetry, many things. How does she do that? How does she keep you centered? What, uh, what well, she is? Reality is a funny thing, you know? It's all, your reality is what you believe, believe it to be, and it's what you put your thought and your energy into, because your hands physically manifest thought. So your world becomes what you feel and what you think. And, and to be careful and conscious of that, and really to create your world. And uh, if there's too much blue in it, bring some yellow in it, you know? And as well in business, I, I don't want to believe in the cliches of the business. They exist, I don't doubt that. But I also want to bring a new way in. I want to interact with people. So just ideas she teaches me, like um, when you have your own sense of integrity or innocence or whatever you value about yourself and wish to keep whole, people can come to that <laughs> when they're dealing with you instead of you leaving it to come to where they are. And so rising, you know, bringing the best out in people and keeping your intent high. And even if it doesn't work, not to be disillusioned, but to really keep intent there. When you say that hands physically manifest thought, Hands physically manifest thought. Is that something she taught you? Some words that she taught you? Mm -hmm. Possibly. It's hard to remember those things. A lot of this is what I write, too, that I learn from when I write. It's like, when I write, I learn things about myself or about people or the world. It's particularly true with artists that use their hands. I mean, you actually really do. You bring yeah. out the thought out of your... Mm -hmm. out of your I have a, a poem, <laughs> sort of American haiku that I read of yours that uh, is has been up on the walls of our offices because it's very, very good. <laughs> it says, Las Vegas. You want to read it? <laughs> Las Vegas. Are we going? Las Vegas, women who suck their cigarettes as though they were giving their hatred head. <laughs> Boy, that's a killer. And we all can see those women right away. <laughs> Boy. When, my what? first trip. What, first trip to Las Vegas was 16 blown away. And you wrote that at 16? Yeah. I love life, so I love that about people. I, I, I adore the human experience. I really adore the, the darknesses and the, you know, I love the contradictions of people. I don't mind being sexy and girlish and womanly and, you know, all those things at the same time. Smart and very naive, you know, all those kinds of things. I like that about people. Mm. I like our rough edges. <laughs> There's so many different kinds of us, that's for sure. Yeah. In, in and infinitely we, fascinating. And that we try to clean things up, too, that there's only one of personality or those kinds of things. <laughs> You've always been fascinated with the question, uh, what is immortality? Yeah. Why aren't we? Why aren't we immortal? immortal? <laughs> well, well, so far, how are your thoughts on it? Um, at the time, when I was in 10th grade, I was really fascinated with that thought a lot. I did a lot of reading. One of my favorite works was Plato's Symposium. And uh, I really liked it because it suggested in that that through love and through beauty we achieve immortality only because it's art, one of the most conscious and honest expressions of ourselves. But if we really put all our passion into something, it will breathe, like a good sculpture, like a good Michelangelo or Clint I love. Um, so it's a really beautiful thing to make your life your artwork, you know, and mm -hmm. to really pull in every experience mm -hmm. you want and to need and take that kind of mm -hmm. conscious control of it. Do you believe in reincarnation, in, of a way? 
Mm, Do you I? said your mother was an old soul. Mm. I How do you figure that works? I believe in reincarnation. Yeah. I don't have any strict belief system. <laughs> I believe in charm. I believe in magic. <laughs> I believe in hope. Absolutely. You believe in women in government? <laughs> I believe in everything. I, I'm not particularly a feminist. I consider uh -huh. myself a humanist. Uh -huh. I don't like drawing the lines between us anymore. I recognize its value in, in history, and I'm very thankful for uh -huh. it. But I'm also tired of being angry. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of separating us anymore. Yeah. I don't. There's all thought possible. There's all realities possible. I don't find one inconsistent or one that can't work with another. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. We'll be back with singer-songwriter yeah. Jewel, whose debut album is Pieces of You. Mm. You lived in your van, surfed, wrote poetry, hung out in coffee houses. Sounds <laughs> like me and all my friends <laughs> at your age. Uh, except I haven't heard of that happening too much in 25 years. Mm. Uh, when I graduated high school, I didn't want to go to college. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. I've always felt driven, but felt no focus for the drive. So I moved to Southern California, San Diego, where my mom was, where good friends were hanging out. Ended up staying a while. And got an apartment where I was waitressing and, and things like that. And it's the kind of stuff where you barely pay your rent and you don't have enough money for food and you scrape food off of people's plates, you know, where you waitress and that. Steal toilet paper from yeah. a public restaurant. Public I restaurant. I've been there, been there, done that. <laughs> I thought, what a shame that so many of us sacrifice all our pride and all our health just to have roofs over our heads. Certain things should be guaranteed us and we shouldn't fear day to day our survival. We're capable of so much more, and, and I decided I, I couldn't face consciousness one more second. The rest of my life, I was 18 at this point, the rest of my life doing something that I hated. Face consciousness? Yeah. Because you can't That's really be one. conscious <laughs> in that. I mean, you, you have to be yeah. unconscious to get through it. You have to go to sleep it, a sort of. little, you know, yeah. for sure. And, and so I decided, then fine, I'll drop out of society. There's a lot of guilt things involved. I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of my generation especially feels obligated to change the world, just, you know, politically and to help pollution and those things. And we feel afraid because we don't know how we can affect something that large out of our control. And we say we won't have kids and bring them into the world. And those are sad things for people so young to say and to feel that, feel that apathy and that responsibility and guilt. And, and so moving into my car felt almost selfish, as though I was giving up on all of that. And it was such a shock to realize that when I was living in my van and praying to Buddhas in whatever, <laughs> anything, Please let a dream come true for me. Please let me support myself by living my passion. Let me eat every day doing something that I love. That moved people. That actually reminded people to live that in their own lives. And people that came to my little show where 70 people sit in the club, you know, go, you know, I haven't written poetry since I was eight years old because my dad said it was stupid, but here's my first poem I want to give you. And it still makes me cry. And when I, you know, when I sing, that's why I sing. Because I was given a, a great gift. I get to live. <laughs> <laughs> the way Doing what should. you want. Yeah, and that's beautiful. Yeah, that's the number one thing we should think about. Yeah. That's for sure. Do you have adult heroes to guide you? Does your, do you think your generation has yeah, really yeah. adult that's heroes? Yeah, that's a hero. But he wasn't if quite an adult, right? I mean, we had right. people in their 40s and 50s. Do you have any of those? Musicians, maybe. Yeah. You know? I don't know if that much has to do with adults, but what moves you and what you respect. And that changes from generation to generation. We're, we're, we become what we're told, you know. The song Daddy in my music is a song about that. You become, you have soft bellies as a child, and if your parents are one way, you become it. And that's, you know, we're very influenced. We're very influenceable and tender. And um, to realize that. Say. And we should protect ourselves. And innocence isn't something that's lost. It's something that's maintained. And we should maintain our innocence. What's the story behind Daddy? Daddy. My poor father. <laughs> Every, you know, we live, in the, we live in a small town in Alaska, and so we think it's about him. It's actually about when I was seven years old, I went to a friend's house for dinner. And uh, we went to the kids' room to watch TV, and we watched my favorite show, which was The Jeffersons. Mm -hmm. And uh, the father came in the middle of the show and turned the TV off and punished the children because they weren't allowed to watch black people on TV. And I'd never heard of such a thing in my life. And I wrote the song, you know, years later, wondering if they had become like they were told, because yeah. we're not yeah. started like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not natural, yeah. you know, we learn it. And no, so no. There's if anything, we're that. thrilled by somebody and something different, because mm -hmm. it means there's more to learn. Yeah. We'll be back with songwriter Jewel Kilcher. Songwriter Jewel. Um, so, like I say, most of our heroes were shot. Your heroes seem to be killing themselves, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how do you think your generation will be able to move it along I and mean, that is the job of youth. We have to realize 
Okay, I don't know how to solve the political problem. I don't know how to solve the pollution problem. All I know is in my own life, I need to figure out some sense of purpose. I need to figure out how to be happy. And I'm willing to give up looking at all you and trying to do everybody else's laundry and look at myself and go, what do I need? And that's what do profound. You need? We point so many fingers and we go, this person isn't, are you blah, blah, blah? We all just took care of ourselves, you know, we'd be very efficient. Um, all I can do ultimately in my own life, all I can speak is from my experience. You were lucky, though, that you got uh, parents that had lived their passions to, to a degree. Mm -hmm. and, and showed you a great example of that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but certainly telling people does. It gives, it gives them the idea, if you don't have your parents doing it, at least it's... Well, it doesn't show down how to. valuable our parents' generation was. A lot of them did sacrifice their pride and health to help us, to put us through school. To give us stable environments. And that happened in my family, you know. Dreams were let go. Um, and now we're learning a new way. It's all, it's a great time to be alive. Mm. And you look at the history of humanity, you know, from the beginning of, of the human, we, for the first time in our lives, are worrying less and less about survival and more about our purpose. And that's unique. You know, that's very unique. And it's a good time to be alive. It it's shouldn't be as frustrating as, as we feel. It's extraordinary. Yeah. It's the first time women have own themselves. Yeah. In a, way a lot of people own themselves. Did. Men as well have really had to feel the responsibility and burden of, of being a provider and everybody's really? had their roles and we're yeah. all learning, you know, to I heard learn. about you from Sean Penn. <laughs> Not in person, but I read he kept saying, uh, Jewel, Jewel, she's uh, she's the, gonna be the new Bob Dylan. <laughs> um, I like Sean. He's very nice. He's been um, a I'm tremendous help and supporter um, of what I do and it's nice to see people change, and, you know, it's beautiful. I like being there for it. I don't know what influence I have or don't have. Yeah. And you just, you did music for The Crossing? You, you're now doing, um... I did, I wrote a song called Emily, um, for The Crossing Guard. And also, I just, I wrote a song last night for the Tim Robbins film that he's acting in, um, which is a great movie. Great. Both of them are great. The other one's called Dead Man Walking. And I just wrote a song about hope and forgiveness and how do you forgive a killer. And what is that about yourself and those things? How, how fast can you write a song? I mean, how, how does it happen that you just do that? How do you write a song? Um, it comes from an emotion. I get an emotion in, in myself. And then I, I pick words that match that chord or that vibration or whatever it is, that emotion, that color. And if the word doesn't fit in, you know, if it doesn't exactly give you that twinge or that feeling of relief, then it's the wrong word. Mm -hmm. And they just come right around it. It happens pretty quick. How do you think that your lyrics and your poetry differ? I mean, are they the same thing, sort mm. of? Or do you use your poetry and your lyrics? Mm. I think my poetry is more original because time isn't passing when you're writing it. There's no time. You can write, pause, there's no rhyme scheme, there's no beat. So when you're writing a song, I'll write it with my guitar and time is constantly passing. So you're jumping rhyme around to rhyme word. Um, it's a little more frustrating that we all have to stop and look at my words on paper and then come up with better things or more appropriate or more to the point things. Um, but it's, my poetry actually is starting to infiltrate into my music, um, but it's in a different, a different rhythm. Um, it all blends. Right, right. My poetry is autobiographical though, generally. It's all in, from my diaries. All my poetry is written in my diary books. My songs aren't very often autobiographical. Are not? Usually from other people. Right. Where do you, how do you mean usually from other people? Are they usually I'm about sure. other people, what you've seen, like you, the, the, the neighbor kids mm -hmm. in the television set? Story. Not to say I didn't live the experience. That's reality again. I believe dreams are real because you emotionally experience something. That's what makes something real to me is when I emotionally experience it, if uh -huh. not physically. Uh -huh. um, so I emotionally experience these things of, of cheating on a husband and I go through it. It's emotional, you know, and I can write about it. I'm going to embellish and add to it, um, though I've never have, or obviously those kinds of things. But you cheated on your boyfriend. Huh? You cheated on your boyfriend. Is that in one of my poems? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it says you've done that. You're sort of right on the edge of this uh, great springboarding career. Okay. What, how do you, uh, where do you want to go from here? What do you want to do? And if I ever get... When I feel comfortable, like, I'm not going to worry about food anymore, that'll be a tremendous relief. And it sounds silly, I know I shouldn't worry about it, but I really hope that, I hope I get to support my life every day, doing what I love. I would like you to come back. Oh, I would so love it. So we can uh, be wonderful. talking. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs>
All right. And thanks for playing mm -hmm. for us. Thank that you. was really great. <laughs> um, good night. Hope we see you again real soon.